Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and uh, I haven't done a political post box for a couple of weeks. This is where I just go through a few interesting comments from people that appeared on the videos and I thought I might as well theme it around ones related to Boris Johnson's so-called Brexit plan, even though it's not really a Brexit plan, to discuss some of the issues around Brexit and the Irish backstop issue, how we deal with the fact that Northern Ireland is, is very unique in that it effectively exists as a place that you can imagine is part of a unified Ireland, sort of, even though it's technically part of the UK, which all sort of worked until such time as the UK decided it would like to leave the EU, at which point Northern Ireland goes into a sort of legal limbo. So we're going to go for the first question. This is one that keeps cropping up. Um, I have to say a spectacular level of ignorance, but here we go. So the Irish border can be digitally checked. They are lying. They do it between other countries. Now, at this point, of course, I had to ask this person, you name me two other countries that do purely digital checks where they don't already have freedom of movement between them because there aren't any. When, when you do ask someone and they can be bothered to give a response, because all this person has done, obviously, because they're not responded. To be fair, you know, although I responded to them fairly quickly after they posted, I suppose they immediately turned off the internet and went off for three days. And maybe they will get back to me at some point. Maybe they have by the time this video has gone out for you guys. But um, the answer is always something like, oh, Norway and Sweden. Yes, between Norway and Sweden, I gather they have digital checking and that's all there is at the border. Norway is not in the EU, Sweden is in the EU. Aha, point proved. Except, of course, that Norway is in Schengen. There is complete freedom of movement of people and goods between Norway and Sweden. The fact that Norway isn't in the EU is a matter of irrelevance. Now, of course, if the UK wished to join Schengen or wished to adopt a comprehensive customs union such that we could legally have completely free movement between the UK and the EU of goods and people, then this also wouldn't be a problem. We could also have the digital tracking. The other thing is, you've got, I mean, that's just one level. That is just a fairly easy thing to look up. Seriously, you name me, as I said to this person who didn't respond, you name me two countries that have purely digital tracking, and I will name you two countries that have complete freedom of movement where you can move whatever you like between them. Um, but there's a couple of other levels of fairly obvious that this is actually the people saying that you can do digital tracking that align. First of all, if you could just do it digitally, why haven't we? This nonsense came up over a year ago. That's plenty of time, if such a system exists, to have implemented it. Why isn't it implemented and already working and proving to everyone that it works? Because I'll tell you two countries that don't have this technology between them, and that is the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. Why not if it's that simple? And then the third thing, Let's say your brain's still struggling to grapple it. Here's the question I would say. How on earth does digital tracking tell anyone what's inside a lorry? How does that work? Because that's what you need a check at a border for. What is inside that lorry? Who is inside that lorry? Are you bringing people in across the border that shouldn't be coming across the border? Are you bringing goods across the border that shouldn't be coming across? Or are you bringing goods across that are fine to come across, but you're not declaring them, and so you know, you're not paying your, your taxes on them? How is digital tracking supposed to tell what's inside a lorry? It can't, a person can't, an x-ray machine can't. Nothing can tell you everything that's inside a lorry. That's why you have to have people there to open the door and check. But of course you do that at the border or anywhere near the border in Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland and they'll find more inside that lorry than they bargained for. That is the issue. So yeah, this is a fairly easy one to dismiss. I cannot believe there's people still banging on about it. So next one it says, I wish the EU would stop being so accommodating and nice and just come out and say that the deal is garbage. Uh, I mean, they sort of have a diplomatic language, I have to say. Um, and, and if they, they are going to increasingly over the next few days, I suspect. I was also quite disappointed with the overall reaction of Parliament today. Interesting that none of the DUP showed up for the statement. Why would they? I think you may be wrong about them, though, Phil. The Boris plan gives them the exclusive ability to veto anything that Ireland, the UK or the EU wants to do in the future. I think they would absolutely sell out Northern Ireland to get that sort of power. 
No, because this can't possibly go through. This plan cannot be enacted. That's the whole point of it being unworkable. It doesn't give them any power at all and they know that. Um, but as to the first one in terms of being accommodating nice, they have to be. You have to remember that the EU Council, the individual other members, their heads of government, um, you know, the, even the dignitaries within the EU are politicians you know, and just like our politicians, they need to appeal to the people who elected them there. Um, they have to play politics too. And don't imagine that people, generally the masses in any of these other countries, are any more politically aware or smarter than they are in the UK. Uh, they may have a certain advantage and their media isn't as ridiculous um, and, and as hugely partisan as ours is. But generally speaking, the people are not necessarily on balance, better informed. So it's very, so people are going to suffer in the EU as a result of a no deal Brexit. There's no getting around that. Um, obviously a large block doesn't have as much suffering per say thousand people that the UK will. Although certain countries like Republic of Ireland will be very, very badly hit. Obviously, if it's very clearly the UK's fault, then no one is going to blame those politicians. They've done the best they can. No one is calling for them to, um, you know, diminish the integrity of their own rules of the single market or anything like that. Quite the reverse. They're saying this is more important. Yes, we're going to suffer as a result of no deal Brexit, but we would suffer more if we compromised our own integrity. That's the bottom line. They lose more money by giving in to the unicorns than they do by just saying, look, this is terrible, but we can't do anything about it. So as a result of that, they have to appear, well, they, they have to be diplomatic and, as you say, accommodating and, and nice. It's absolutely essential. Just like Donald Tusk was saying to Boris Johnson, he, I mean, he, said, he, he tweeted today that he'd spoken to two uh, world leaders. There was uh, the Prime Minister of Republic of Ireland, Varadkar, who said, you know, we're standing with Ireland, solidarity with Ireland. And then he said he contacted Boris Johnson and said, we're open to discussion, but we're not convinced by what you're saying. Uh, and in fact, the language has firmed up a little bit more in, in suggesting now Michelle Barnier has been, I mean, that was Donald Tusk, Michelle Barnier, I believe, has been saying, really hard to see how any deal can come through within the next 10 days without the UK fundamentally changing its position. Uh, so we'll wait and see on that. But yeah, they have, they're, they're politicians. The politicians the world over have to be accommodating and nice. That is sort of their job. And it's also why we shouldn't, forget that although it must be really frustrating for a lot of people it's frustrating for me how ridiculous all, all this is is going on it's constantly it's just round and round and round and round and um i can't help i've got to do it again haven't i i did this just a few weeks ago but it's the most perfect metaphor for brexit ever isn't it it is and, and this is the this and it's a cycle and and apologies to people who've already heard it but it's pretty good you know the uk says we want a unicorn and the EU says, unicorns don't exist. You can have a pony. And the UK says, we vote against your pony. The EU says, well, we've been over this in detail. It's a pony or nothing. We vote against your pony. All right, nothing it is. We vote against your nothing. You're not really getting this, are you? We need more time. To what? Think about the pony or the nothing? We want a unicorn. And it just goes over and over and over. And yes, it's incredibly frustrating for most people. But you've got to bear in mind, diplomats, politicians, they're used to this. They're used to this. Not Okay, it's not usually, this nonsense isn't usually on display as publicly as this is. But these, this is why trade negotiations take a decade or more. Because these sort of things do take a long time. So I wouldn't worry about the actual people at the sharp end getting bored by it or anything like that. Uh, next one, it says, am I right in my assumption that Britain's exit from the EU is a special case because no other country has such an awkward relationship with its neighbour? Oh, well, shall I just throw India and Pakistan in there? I think, I think there are countries that have more awkward relationships with their neighbours than the UK and the EU or, or you know, the other EU nations, I have to say. But anyway... Would it therefore be impossible for Great Britain to exit anyway, unless they want to welcome the IRA? So why would you have a ref I think you mean UK there, by the way. Uh, so why would you have a referendum in the first place? The politicians knew about the border situation. The EU didn't have to make it difficult. Right, okay, pick apart this. Okay, yes, 
When we look at the type of Brexit that is emerging now, it is completely at odds with the Good Friday Agreement. Completely at odds. Uh, it's impossible. It is impossible to have a hard Brexit and preserve peace in, in Ireland. Absolutely. That is not to say that it is impossible to have Brexit and preserve peace in Northern Ireland. Remember, the Brexiteers were all calling for a Norway-style arrangement. We could have had that. We did not pursue that. That would have been fine. We'd have had the same standards, we'd have kept our standards aligned, and we could have preserved that free movement. Everything would have been unkidori, would have all been fine. We'd have lost all our influence, of course, as the UK. We'd have lost that influence, but we could have had peace in Ireland still. That would have been fine. Um, then you go on to say the politicians knew about the border situation. Actually, they didn't. Um, <laughs> you might imagine that they would, but I'm afraid David Cameron, Theresa May, and Boris Johnson understand nothing. And to be fair, Ireland, Northern Ireland in particular, is fairly complex. You have to actually put effort into trying to understand it. It doesn't really fit with normal situations of life. And, and the only way to find out about it is to ask people who are living there. Um, and they have made no attempt to do so. Some politicians have. Some politicians come from Northern Ireland or very close to the northern part of Republic of Ireland. Um, many do not and have shown... Boris Johnson has no clue whatsoever about life in and around the border. No idea. So no, it's not that politicians knew about the border situation. They didn't. It has shocked the hell out of them. Some of them, so much so that they, be, they, they believe it's just people being awkward. They still don't understand. They refuse to understand. So, you know, don't be amazed how ignorant politicians can be, even senior politicians. Remember, politician is probably the most lucrative job you can have where you need no skills or knowledge at all. Yes, some politicians have some. Sometimes it's even useful skills and knowledge to their role but they don't need it, which means quite a lot of them don't have them. <laughs> that's, that's the unfortunate nature of democracy. And no, you can't give them a test because that would be anti-democratic. The whole point of democracy is that anyone can be a politician. They, in fact, the only skills they do need is charisma, really. Although some of them don't really have that. You actually have to wonder in some cases. Um, it's a popularity contest. Uh, next one says, there is one important point nobody is thinking of. The exit is only the beginning. There is a new trade agreement with the EU to be negotiated. After all this mess on the British side, how generous will the EU side be? So I actually responded to this one and I did say, generosity is something not to consider in trade negotiations. In trade negotiations, it is the job of the negotiators to get the best deal for their side. And in order to do that, you have to make the other side believe they've got a good deal, but they haven't. And... Um, Generosity in negotiations is only something that would ever come as a result of incompetence. Now, the EU trade negotiators are demonstrably the best on the planet. The absolute best. Look at what they've done. Look at the massive trade area they have created across the globe. They're excellent. They're tough. And we, think about it this way, we don't really have many trade negotiators at all. The only trade negotiators we have are the ones that have been doing it on the part of the EU. The UK has not, con on its own, conducted trade negotiations since before I was born. There aren't any, apart from a couple that have been doing it as EU trade negotiators. And those couple are not really going to stand up to all the rest of the EU trade negotiators. But in terms of the general thing, yes. Yes, it, however we leave... It didn't matter whether we left under the withdrawal agreement or no deal. There's going to be massive, that will take years, decade or more, um, negotiations to, to cobble something together. But there's a good reason for people not really to talk about this unless it's an area of their expertise. And that is, we don't know anything. Like, we might not leave the EU at all. That is still not certain. And if we don't, then there are no negotiations to take place. We may leave with a deal. This is 
Dunningly unlikely, but at some, not this October, of course, but at some point it is possible, you can't rule it out while Brexit is still a thing, that we could leave with a deal. In which case, that will obviously inform the sort of negotiations that take place. We could leave with no deal. In which case, Boris, well, there's two types of, there's two things that could happen initially. One, Boris Johnson thinks that the EU will come crawling to us as soon as we've shown we're prepared to leave without a deal. Now, they're not going to. <laughs> they are not going to. So, one of two things will happen. Either Boris Johnson will re realise his folly, realise that the country is going to hell, realise that actually with the upcoming general election, if it doesn't do something quickly, is finished, and he will go crawling to them to get something in place bloody quickly. Um, or he'll double down like he has so far and tough it out. Those are two hugely different divergent situations. So we have no idea what the circumstances could possibly be for when these negotiations are going to begin. So to be fair, if you're an expert in international trade negotiations, of course you can talk about all the different possibilities. But to the rest of us, it's not really much point, I'm afraid. It, it's, you're correct, and it is important. But until we know the circumstances of our leaving, we can't possibly say how they would even start, let alone finish. Um, that's the reason there. Okay, next one, last couple here. So something I've been noticing, Johnson and co constantly talk about how they're going to leave the EU, but they are not yet to say what they will do after that. I'll stop there. I'll just point out that has been the Brexit trick for 20 years. Basically, about 20 years ago, there were lots of different groups that were all wanting to leave the EU. And they were all talking about the sort of post, they didn't call it Brexit then, but the sort of post-EU Britain that they wanted to see and they disagreed with each other violently. They eventually realised that they couldn't possibly agree on what sort of Britain they wanted, because they all wanted different things. So they decided that the only way to gain any momentum, gain any momentum, was to just stick to their line of we want to leave the EU. Don't say anything about what you want to do after, because you can't agree. And it worked. They gained some momentum. They looked like they were all together. They gained a critical mass because all they did was say, we don't want to be in the EU. And that was it. That was their single message. And, uh, and that was it. So obviously, this is going to be the case of Boris Johnson because he's joined that camp. They can't say what post-Brexit Britain's going to look like because they will all violently disagree again. They can't have that. They're already not quite enough because we know the country would, you know, poll to stay in the EU if it was asked again now. Anyway, so the next one, it says, they've said what they'll do as government, not that anyone believes them, or quite right, I mean, it's not like they're uh, known for telling the truth. It says, but that's all stuff they can do within the EU. True. Since the referendum, the Tories have yet to give a single way in which leaving the EU will be worth this whole ordeal. I'd go further than that. No one has given a single way in which this will be worth the whole ordeal. Not one. To begin with, they denied it would even be an ordeal. Now they had to admit there's an ordeal. That's why they're trying to blame others. Because they were trying to say at first, yeah, we can leave without a deal and we'll be fine. Well, that was okay to say that when we had no realistic prospect of leaving without a deal because Parliament wasn't that reckless. Now we're in a situation where we have a completely rogue Prime Minister who might just do it. Shouldn't be able to, but we can't be certain. Uh, at which point they have to think of excuses because they know that it will be terrible. Their own report says it will be terrible. Um, and there they go. And you say, and they wonder why they're losing their vote share. They're actually not, unfortunately. I mean, the polls have them at much lower vote share than they won in 19, 19, 2017, sorry. I mean, they're on bloody century. Going back to the First World War, wasn't even around. Going back to a past life. Um, yeah, they're unfortunately not. Um, they're sort of stable. They've actually just sneaked up a little bit in the polls. And don't gummy all this, oh, the uh, polls don't mean anything. People only say that when the polls don't say what they want them to say, and then they're flashing them in your face when they do. Um, no, uh, they, they certainly don't look like getting the vote share that would put them into government. That's the, the saving grace at the moment. But I mean, obviously, vote share doesn't translate into seats anyway. It's very tricky to judge. But no one has ever won a majority in Parliament with as low a vote share as 32%. So, but we will have to see. These things could change around when campaigning for the actual general election starts. We'll, we'll know then. Final one. We might as well put some Dominic Cummings in there. Why not? 
Uh, it says, Phil's theory is plausible, explains why Cummings disciples insist that the UK, so I'll quickly go over that if you didn't watch the video from yesterday. Basically what I'm suggesting is what Boris Johnson may do. He's got tacit approval for his plan, even though the EU aren't approving of it. So he, but no one actually knows what his plan means. No one knows what the withdrawal agreement means. No one knows, no one reads this. So I say no one, obviously a small number of people, but the supporters of Brexit don't know. So he could easily go to the EU, ask for the same withdrawal agreement they've already agreed, but Northern Ireland only uh, backstop. Come back, say he's changed the backstop, perfectly true. Uh, everyone cheers, hey, he's changed the backstop, good old Boris. Present it as being basically the same plan as he had, but with tweaks, and get it through Parliament. And then the EU have agreed to it, and then he could take us out with no deal, because there's more to be done to actually take us out with the deal, and there won't be time to do it then, especially if he doesn't lay the legislation for the House. So that's that quickly. Um, so it explains why Cummings' disciples insist that the UK will leave and no law will be broken. Obviously, they do sometimes lie. Doesn't mean that. Um, says, but what then? When would Cummings call a general election? Uh, would the Tory party be confident it could win that campaign successfully as the effects of crashing over out of Europe by? So again, I responded to this. It says here, I'll just do the last bit. Does Cummings and party think that delivering Brexit is enough to win the election? If they deliver a no-deal Brexit, I cannot... It's very difficult at the moment. Political wisdom's out the, out the window. Because you look at the moment, you think Labour have no chance of winning a general election. But then you look at the Conservatives, and especially in the event of a no-deal Brexit, you think, well, they have no chance of winning a general election. And political wisdom also says that the Lib Dems have no chance either. No one has any chance, but someone's got to be able to form a government, albeit a minority government. So someone, against all the political wisdom, will have to emerge and appoint their leader as Prime Minister. Some, there has to be a Prime Minister. So um, there always has to be a Lich King. Um, <laughs> sorry. So, but what I said to this particularly was about Dominic Cummings, does he care? Does he really care? He's trying to deliver a no-deal Brexit. Why would he give a crap whether the Conservatives won the general election or not? He's not an MP. He doesn't have to worry about his seat. He doesn't even have to worry about the Conservative Party. Sure, the Conservative Party have paid him a lot of money over the years to advise them. Maybe they'll continue to do that. Maybe they won't. He doesn't care. He's fabulously wealthy. He can go off and, con and advise other reprobates around the world, maybe. He doesn't give a crap. He's trying to deliver a no-deal Brexit. Then you may ask, well, what about Boris Johnson? He wants to preserve his seat and his premiership. I don't think Boris Johnson's the brains behind this. If Dominic Cummings, apparent, by all reports, the only two people Boris Johnson is listening to at the moment is his mistress, who's a bit of an airhead, and Dominic Cummings, who does not necessarily have Boris Johnson's best interests at heart. He's not listening to any other advisors. So Boris Johnson is not necessarily getting the best advice. That's all there is to it. So hopefully that sheds a little bit more light on some of the issues around this Boris plan and, and the Northern Irish backstop. Um, it'll be the weekend now when this goes out. I may do another one a little later. It all depends. I'm doing this on Thursday night. You'll see it on Friday morning, maybe. Um, and, and then I'll be off for the weekend. If something stunningly exciting happens on Friday, then I might have time to do one when I get back from work before I disappear off for the weekend. But unless that happens, have a good weekend and I'll see you later on, probably get one out on Sunday. So thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. Until next time, I'll see you later.